Proteins are the workhorse molecules in the cell, and the concentrations of different proteins under different conditions can give us a snapshot of what is happening inside each cell. There are many methods we can use to determine the size and identity of proteins, including SDS page, a technique used to separate proteins based upon their size. This is usually coupled with processes to visualize the proteins once they are separated. SDS page, or sodium deodesyl sulfate polycrylamide gel electrophoresis, that's a long name, is a technique used to separate proteins based on their size, also commonly referred to as their molecular weight. The process involves denaturing or unraveling the protein into a linear string of amino acids and applying an electrical charge across them. The SDS applies a negative charge to the proteins, so they naturally migrate towards the positive anode. The proteins are separated in a gel, contained in a tank filled with buffer, and connected to a power pack. The gel has wells in which the samples are placed. When a current is applied, the proteins migrate down the gel. Smaller proteins will be able to travel through the matrix within the gel faster than larger proteins. As a result, after applying the current for a set period of time, you end up with a gradient of proteins with the larger ones at the top and the smaller ones at the bottom. It should be noted that at this point, we still cannot see any of the proteins from the sample on the gel as they have not been stained with anything. So we use a protein ladder which contains a number of proteins of known size and add it in a separate well. Now we can have something to compare our samples to. Pre-made gels are usually sold in packets with some buffer in it to keep the gels moist. Before setting up the gels, it is extremely important that you remove the strip at the bottom of the gel. This strip is initially there to keep the gel in place. However, it will hinder the protein separation if it's left on during electrophoresis. The gels are clamped into the holding apparatus and buffer is applied to fill the inner space and about one third of the entire tank. The combs at the top of the gel are now removed, making sure that this doesn't damage the gel underneath. The wells need to be flushed out before any sample is added to them. They may contain air bubbles or glycerol, which may affect how neatly your samples go into the well. Protein ladders and samples mixed with loading buffer are then added in sequence to the gel. When adding a sample, make sure that there are no air bubbles in the pipette tip. Also, don't push a pipette tip into the bottom of the well, as this can pierce the gel. Place the lid on the tank, ensuring that the cathode and anode on the tank match those on the lid by checking the colors match. Plug in the connecting cables and run the power at a constant voltage. Depending on the voltage, this gel should take about 30 to 40 minutes to sufficiently separate the proteins in the sample. Once the gel has finished running, release it from its plastic casing. Using a separator, lever the plastic casing apart. This can require a little more force than what is typically used for these protocols. Peel off the casing and place the gel in a tray for further processing. After the proteins on the gel have been separated, the next step is to visualize them. Remember at this point we have not stained the proteins with anything, so the proteins themselves are still transparent and all we can see is the protein ladder. There are a number of different staining or visualization methods and let's talk about the Kamasi stain, a blunt force technique if you will, staining all the proteins on the gel. This involves the addition of Kamasi Brilliant Blue or an equivalent dye directly on the gel to visualize the proteins. This is a quick and cheap technique that doesn't require much expertise. The dye simply stains all the proteins on the gel, but is not very sensitive to small amounts of protein. It is also not a very specific technique, if you're looking for one protein in particular, but it is a quick way to assess the amount of proteins present. The Kumasi is a two-step process. The first step is to add the stain and allow it to incubate on a shaking platform for about 30 minutes. The second step is to remove the staining solution and add a de-staining and fix it to buffer. All this buffer does is fix the existing stain to any proteins on the gel and remove any excess stain from regions of the gel without any proteins. After a few washes, the gel is ready for analysis. You should be able to see distinct bands representing different size proteins across the lanes with the color intensity of the staining indicative of the protein levels present. This is usually the first step of the analysis. The basics of protein analysis often involves an SDS page experiment and visualizing results via Kamasi staining. Or to put it simply, running your samples on a gel and then staining them with a dye to look at the banding patterns present. Kamasi staining stains most of the proteins present on the gel 
and its application is mostly limited by this lack of specificity. Of course, there are other more sensitive methods of detection out there, but this is a very solid starting point for protein analysis.